hello and welcome. Hopefully you enjoyed your lunch and nice views over the Bratislava and I really hope you also enjoyed this presentation about DOT and what's new in Digital Onboarding Toolkit product team. So what we'll cover today, uh, first of all I will just remind you a little bit what, uh, what Innovatrix DOT uh, really is, what uh, technology is hidden inside DOT and uh, uh, then why we are actually obsessed with the user experience when, when designing all the DOT components. And of course I will share also some uh, future roadmap, so what we are planning uh, in the upcoming months for you. Okay, so digital or DOT uh, stands for Digital Onboarding Toolkit and uh, we used to uh, position it or promote it as a full technology stack which helps you, uh, our partners, uh, with building remote identity verification applications. And it consists of three main technology components, uh, face verification, liveness detection, and identity document verification. Well, it's true, but only partially. Um, as recently, we, uh, we released a major update to DOT uh, with uh, an, an added one more very important component to the whole process. We call it onboarding trust evaluation and management. And I really believe now we should talk more about, about DOT as more about the platform, not just the technology stack or just the toolkits uh, that are ready to use. Uh, we call this new offering DOT Trust Platform and uh, it's powered by the original DOT components as well as uh, the ABIS components, uh, which uh, you might have seen in the previous uh, presentation. And I'm really proud about this offering. I think it's a really huge step forward for DOT. And just to give you the whole picture, I will talk about this more uh, about this in more details later. Uh, but for now, uh, really, it is a complete platform. Uh, starts with uh, the with the components, with the client components SDKs for easy enrollment. It has a backend with complete redesigned API uh, that's much easier to integrate and uh, focus more on the use case of digital onboarding. And it also consists of the web application for uh, easy identity management and review uh, of the process onboardings. Okay, uh, and DOT, uh, of course, it's the youngest product inside Innovatrix, but it's also the fastest growing product uh, in, in, in Innovatrix. And I'm really happy that it's really uh, uh, trusted globally. Thanks to you, our partners, uh, we currently process more than 50 million onboardings annually. So I think that's a really nice number. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the technology that is in, hidden inside DOT. Uh, of course, it's all started with the top ranked facial biometrics. And uh, you know, we are constantly working on being really among the best uh, vendors in the world in terms of facial biometrics. Uh, but soon we realized that uh, it's not enough and currently, according also to Acuity Market Intelligence, there is one very important component, technology component, the liveness detection. And I'm really proud that Innovatrix is really just one of the few vendors uh, who developed this uh, technology uh, and we are really uh, spending a lot of effort into making this technology uh, in the best possible way. And of course, there is identity document verification. So, um, uh, I'm, 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 I'm really, I really think we, we invested also a lot of energy into, into this component. So currently we 
are able to automatically classify the documents. And we support more than 1,200 documents worldwide uh, uh, with uh, seven different scripts, so from Latin to Arabic to, to even the, to Chinese and so on. And recently we also added the uh, NFC support, as this is something that is also very demanded on the market. Now the question is, the technology is great, but is it enough? Um, and I think we were always challenged with you, our partners. Uh, the, you know, the rankings are beautiful and it's cool, but, uh, but you always come with some other challenges or some other requirements that we had to uh, keep in mind and uh, we have to uh, work on those. And the, the most two common requirements that are basically coming from all the DOT projects that we ever had is first of all, well, it needs to be super secure, right? You cannot let any froster in, it's, it's just no way. The security needs to be a top priority. Uh, well, okay, so we'll try to do our best. But at the same time, hey guys, you have to increase the completion rate, right? So it needs to be so flawless and easy to use. The user experience needs to be a top priority. And uh, well, challenge accepted. So. Uh, I will share with you a little bit about why we are actually obsessed with the user experience, not just with the technology, and our quest for the ultimate user experience and, and security that uh, uh, we uh, pursued with you. So, of course, for the end user, um, the process should be as simple as, as this, so I'll just I'll take a picture of my ID, um, I will take selfie, and I'm enrolled. Yeah? So it's really simple and it's perfect. I don't need to do anything else. But of course it's not that simple, right? Uh, uh, there is, when we started, we for example, we realized that, okay, users tend to take really strange photos of their IDs. So it was really hard then to also process these images and do some meaningful results with these. Uh, of course, the faces as well. So you would be really surprised how many different <laughs> sample images we received and okay, this is not working. Why, why the technology is not working? So what was our answer to this? Well, we do not let the users to take the images, but our technology does that for, for them. That's why we introduced the ID auto capture and face auto capture components. And I'm, I'm really happy that these are really the world's smallest SDKs, which are performing perfectly according to the feedback that we got from you. And they are available for iOS, Android and also for the web browsers. Uh, as they are really small, they are easy to load into the web browser or into the mobile application. So you are happy and the users are happy because the user experience is, is really great. Uh, okay, you might remember our first liveness detection algorithm, which was about following a dot on the screen, making sure that uh, when the dot is moving to the right, your eyes are moving to the right as well. That was easy uh, principle. It was our first liveness detection. It worked very well. Uh, yet, we had many different uh, problems, <laughs> users who were basically not able to follow this relatively simply procedure and we were surprised how many different uh, reactions to this kind of problems uh, the real life experience brought to us. So what was our answer to this? Uh, I'm sure you already heard about our fully passive liveness detection which is 
uh, compliant with iBetter level two uh, testing or requirements. And yeah, of course, it's so easy and uh, convenient for the users to use this kind of approach as because, because they are basically not even noticing it. So it's running in the background while they are taking the picture of themselves. Uh, they also get verified uh, and the neural networks and AI does the rest. We were focusing on optimizing the, these neural networks so they are also available on mobile devices uh, in, uh, without necess so, so it, uh, they can be used without internet as well. Uh, but then again, we got another requirements. Sorry guys, but we need some challenge for the users uh, for different reasons. Um, we, there needs to be something, otherwise it doesn't look very well. It's super fast, so please come back with some other solution for this. So that's why we invented Smile Liveness. It's a challenge, but it's a super simple and, and easy to do challenge because it's very natural for uh, for anyone uh, and it really requires you to smile to the camera. So it's two steps. You just uh, take first picture, then the picture when you are smiling. And this uh, even uh, allowed us to improve the security because we are not evaluating only one frame for the passive liveness, but two frames. So. Uh, that was really a, a good approach that we that we took. Okay, and I already mentioned the dot trust platform, which uh, now allows us really to go even even further. So first of all, as I as I said, we redesigned the API, and we currently are able to evaluate each onboarding. That's because we added a state into the onboarding process. We added database into onboarding process. So we can remember more about the one particular session of onboarding. And uh, based on that, we can really provide you with uh, something what we call trust factors. And this is just a start. So of course, the obvious biometric trust, trust factors like phase match and lioness detection, but also another interesting things like age and gender verification. So we can estimate age from, from the face and compare it with the, the age on the document, uh, same with the gender. And thanks to ABIS, we are able to uh, search for duplicates or in some uh, watch list of the blacklisted people uh, that are not allowed to do onboarding. So that's another very important uh, trust factor that uh, is currently available. And of course, the trust factors that are based on ID document, like expiration date, uh, machine readable zone checksum, consistency between the visual zone and the machine readable zone. Uh, and also things like, okay, uh, isn't this just a like a photocopy of an ID, uh, is it real ID? So these are the, the trust factors that are currently out of the box available for you inside the trust platform. And it's just the beginning. We will be still adding new ones. And I'm really, I will be really happy to discuss with you what you think is important uh, in this matter to add. Of course, uh, the powerful L API requires also very good documentation. So this was something that we redesigned completely from scratch, and I believe it's now much better for you uh, to uh, get oriented uh, in the in the in the dot product offering. Uh, so we do not care just about the user experience of the end users, but the user experience of of uh, you, our partners, who take the technology, who uh, take the, our technology and, and need to use it somehow. Okay, uh, what, uh, what's next on the roadmap? Um, well, the big news uh, for this year, DOT is moving into the cloud. So we are ready to, uh, to offer 
digital identity as a service. Uh, of course, this is something uh, that uh, has been requested many times in the past. Uh, and I think now is the right time to, to have this kind of offering and to even further simplify you as our, our partners and integrators' integration of, of uh, digital onboarding toolkit to the final solutions. The next thing, and we are really obsessed with uh, liveness uh, detection, I mentioned just there is just few of uh, vendors of real liveness detection. So uh, we are constantly working on improving this technology. And uh, we believe if we need to even further improve the security, uh, there might be more, uh, more frames uh, needed for, for evaluating the liveness. But still, we do not want to you know, compromise the user experience. So, we were really uh, thinking hard and designing and testing uh, the, the several approaches. And uh, um, I really don't, do not want to share too many details because this will, this is, this will be a, a big announcement later this year. And we will present the, the new method for liveness detection for you. Uh, we also still focus on the new dimension, uh, the, we call it document authenticity. And from the many feedbacks that we got from the markets uh, or from, from, from you, uh, we realized that like, the two most important uh, checks is that, okay, am I looking to the real issue document or am I looking just on the screenshot of, of the document? And uh, that's something that is really uh, well, easy to say, but harder to implement. But I'm I'm glad that we are that we uh, have this technology now almost ready, and as well we'll be sharing uh, some some uh, some uh, uh, new features that will allow this check later this year. Another thing is the paper print. So very similar. Okay, I can do whatever in Photoshop. But if I want to then use this fake document, well, I either need to show it on the, on the screen of the device or I need to print it. So if I can cover these two attack vectors, I can really help uh, security uh, or have a more secure onboarding. Another attack vector uh, we are focusing on is so-called video injection attack and man in the middle attack. So what does it mean? Video injection means that, okay, it looks like, like I am uh, uh, using my phone with the camera that is on, on, on the phone, but in reality, I'm just compromising the stream from the, from the camera and uh, just pushing a different video stream, which looks like the stream from the camera itself. So the liveness detection as such, is useless in this scenario. Still, we want to have uh, something in our hands to, uh, to identify this kind of attack. Uh, and man in the middle, again, so somehow your API get compromised. You want to make sure that the fo photos that are coming to your server are, have been really processed with our client components. And we have a really cool technology that, uh, that we already implemented, which somehow signs the, the image, and you do not even notice that uh, it has been somehow manipulated. We call it watermarking. Uh, but we can then evaluate it on the server and make sure that, OK, this image was really coming from your uh, digital onboarding toolkit components. And Peter already mentioned this in the morning. I'm really proud that DOT is uh, powering uh, safer internet, that we have a biometric venture that is uh, pursuing this really uh, interesting and I think very useful uh, vertical. And uh, I, I definitely invite you for a tomorrow demo sessions because we will be, we will be demoing uh, this uh, 
along with other, uh, of course, with the Trust platform and other demos. This will be one of the demos as well. Uh, and one very interesting uh, application, we call it Easy or Easy Online Check-in, which, uh, again, we have a demo prepared for you, and I believe this is something that uh, really can, that biometrics can really uh, make our life on the internet even more convenient. So uh, you are welcome to the tomorrow's presentations. Okay, so since 2019 or 2018, when we started digital onboarding, we were really surprised with how many different use cases this technology can be used. Uh, so it it is really nice and crazy journey, and I'm really glad that we are in this together, and uh, that we are basically trying to answer all your uh, all your problems from the real life applications of the remote identity verification. And uh, I really thank you that uh, you come to Bratislava, and I will be more than happy to discuss you uh, anything that uh, is. Dot related, but not just dot related, basically anything. So, thank you very much. Hi, Daniel. Hello. I know you guys like to stand close to the stairs, so I leave the space for you. Everybody wants to run away. Um, okay, uh, Jan talked today in the morning about how tough it is to train the algorithm, that you never have enough data. I'm sure there is probably enough of uh, middle-aged um, Caucasian males, uh, but if you go to new territories, how tough it is for you to kind of train the algorithm so that it really complies with the needs of the partners in that particular area? Well, uh, sure, it is very hard for us. Uh, we are very thankful to the partners, which enable us to, to share some of their data. But as Janot mentioned, that we still need to come up with some creative ways on how to tackle the lack of uh, uh, data that we are getting from, from, from the real world. So that's why we have to generate a lot of artificial data. And this is, this is really uh, something that is common from the, from in, in all uh, dot com technology components. So we are able to generate, for example, uh, different fonts or different uh, texts that look like they, they are printed on an ID document, but in, in fact, it's just generated. And then we train neural networks to read this kind of text from the real IDs. Mm -hmm. So um, this was always super interesting to me. If you keep doing synthetic data, right, duplicating the data, don't you just duplicate the biases that are in the original sample? How do you make sure that you that's, kind of that's get why we the need to we, we need to take care of the testing data sets. So they need to be as objective as possible. So we really know how well we are performing, or uh, we, whether we are not just lying to ourselves that okay, we are super super. Uh, super cool and super accurate, but in, in, in fact only just on those data that would be artificially generated. So the testing data set is crucial mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. So um, you guys have a party today in the, in, in the evening, so there you're going to have this situation in the morning. It happens to me sometimes that I don't know myself in the mirror. So what do you have to do with the thresholds so that the dot actually knows it's me, although the conditions are, you know, shady? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm, I'm sure that uh, in your case, it's, it's okay. Dot can handle everything. So thank you, so sir. It's not <laughs> quite like that, but no, thank you. I appreciate no, no that. No action needed. Appreciate here. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's look a little bit into Slido. Regarding the Dot remote onboarding process, how and when do you intend to tackle both the physical and Photoshop face replacing theft on the chipless ID docs? And you thought the my questions are face, tough. Uh, well, Actually, we will have a demo session that is exactly on, on this topic tomorrow. So, so I invite you to come tomorrow in the afternoon because this is what, we, what my colleagues will present and how actually we can do and identify this kind of uh, threats using dot .trust platform. So please, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, 
design and UX design is, is what I do as a core business, so I know that uh, how, how you guys are crazy about human-centric design as well. Uh, what about the edge cases? Because we call them edge cases, but the edge cases are where the trust is either built or broken, right? Do you have some that were super hard to tackle, like some cases that were like really hard to, to train for? Well, mm, sure we had. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I, I can remember from top of my head, but uh, definitely the one, the, the, the problems or the edge cases with the uh, active lioness check, you mm -hmm. know, the following mm -hmm. the dot on the screen, when we seen really crazy pictures coming from, from the partners and reporting problems, okay, how to solve this? Uh, sometimes it was really funny. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I think we, we tackled it and that's hopefully mm -hmm. I answered in, in the presentation how we did it, so. Yeah, let's go back to this liveness test. Uh, so you said that that kind of happens on the background. It's just something that kind of goes up. How, how does it work? This is fascinating. I mean, I know you don't, you can't tell me just the actual look magic. at you and see you are alive, right? So that's the, that's the trick. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that sounded like an easy <laughs> easy thing to do. Uh, well, basically, we ha you have to have a lot of data. A lot of data that are uh, portraying the real, uh, real identities, people that are normal and uh, pictures of you as, as, for example, you are standing here. And then you have also have a lot of fake data or the spoof data. Mm. So something, for example, that I'm holding just a paper in, in, in front of my head and I take picture of this, uh, this scenario and I have to have a lot of these and I will say the neural network, okay, so this is, this is a fake. So mm. make sure that you recognize this is a fake and this was the genuine. Mm -hmm. And if you have enough data, then you can train the neural network to do the job for you. It all comes down to data and training. Okay, with improvement in detection of fraudsters, do you also see them improving their game with better masks, tags, and so on? Well, of course, yeah. Uh, so that's why it's really important to have uh, R&D that is focused and that have still uh, time for improving the technology because the fraudsters can use to all the approaches that we had uh, three years ago, uh, and we need to keep keep the pace with them. Mm, I've heard that the uh, change in the technology, in the biometric technology, is absolutely rapid, and to keep up with that, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of. It must be very dynamic what you guys yeah, do. It, is, um, it, is. it must be very challenging. Um, it also says doc consists of three modules: face, doc, and life. Can you provide a subset to a partner instead of the whole dot? Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, quite a common requirement or common request, and that's the powerful uh, or power of dot that it's very modular, so it is possible. Sure. Okay, good. I'm almost done. I'm almost going to let you go. Uh, you've had some of the certificates on the PowerPoint presentation, including NIST and some, some other. Uh, those are not easy to get. How hard was it for you guys? And I know that some of those make you very special uh, in the market generally. So yeah. how hard and how special it is that, that you guys have those? Well, for example, the NIST uh, ranking, uh, it's not a certificate, but it's more, you know, um, rank of the vendors. Mm -hmm. So that's a never-ending story. We still need to submit the new version of algorithms and make sure that we are uh, best possible. Uh, with regards, for example, to iBeta, uh, that was actually, I think, half a uh, half-year project to really get those two levels uh, of the, let's say, conformance with the, with the PAD standards. So you make it sound so easy, and it's called DOT, which makes me think like it's tiny and very <laughs> easy, and it's so much more work. Uh, thank you so much, Daniel. It was thank a pleasure you. talking thank to you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.